Salut, Femne Cusute. Hello to all our new friends. Ioana, thank you very much for uh, uh, coming to uh, explain this um, uh, simple yet very complex subject of uh, Sibiu skirts. First of all, uh, let's see why we call it Marginimea Sibiului. What does it mean for us? Is it uh, the outskirts of the Sibiu city? Is it the border between Sibiu and the rest of the world? Um, you are from Sibiu, but you are not living in Sibiu at the moment. Uh, yes, I'm from Sibiu. Currently, I'm living in Germany. Um, and the, um, this area is uh, close to my heart. My father was born there, and uh, uh, I really like it. Uh, so, um, the name is Marginima Sibiului and it refers to both the outskirts of the Sibiu area and also a border area. Um, we are located in the middle of, of, uh, in the middle of current Romania, uh, but before that it used to be the uh, Austrian-Hungarian Empire. And this region refers to a region that was close to the border. So that's why border area. Um, it began in the hillsides in the vicinity of Sibiu, but it went as far as the top of the mountains that were the limit of the empire. Uh, so it's um, hillside slash mountain region where the people uh, were mostly um, managing sheep. Um, that was the main occupation of the uh, community and it refers to a Romanian community as part of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. So uh, next to it um, we used to have uh, Saxon communities, so German-speaking communities and this one is a very specific area of about 18 villages that was uh, populated entirely by a Romanian community. So uh, even if you are telling me that these skirts belong to some people who didn't even live in Romania at the time when these uh, shirts were made. Um, we can define them as uh, very much looking Romanian. And um, let's say if somebody from outside is thinking of the shirts from Eastern Europe, might be confused which is from Ukraine, which is from Romania, which is from Bulgaria and so on. But when seeing these ones, Obviously, there is no doubt. These are from Romania. These are for, from a very specific micro region in Romania. Um, yes, um, the region wasn't part of uh, Romania back then, but it was a Romanian speaking community. It is so much so that when we see black uh, vertical stripes on a shirt, yes. our mind directly goes to Sibiu, to Marginimea Sibiului. And uh, when um, 12 years ago we saw Adele wearing a Tom Ford uh, uh, creation um, inspired by these shirts, um, everybody was like, whoa, Adele is wearing a Romanian blouse. And some of us we were not thinking that the Romanian blouse uh, inspired Romanian blouse. And um, there were mixed feelings about this. How much can a fashion designer inspire from somebody else's culture and not mentioning it? Do you feel any trace of cultural appropriation? Well, yes, obviously. The first, uh, first thing that came to my mind when seeing these uh, shirts was obviously this is cultural appropriation. Um, these blouses might look inspired by the traditional blouse, but um, you don't have to look at them uh, quite a lot before noticing that um, the um, pattern doesn't quite fit, the stripes are not where they should be, the sleeves are not cut the way they should be. So um, while they are obviously inspired, um, I don't think the local blouse benefits from this um, um, press um, coverage. Um, it happens that Tom's Ford collection further inspired other uh, designers and uh, uh, producers of uh, fast fashion, mm -hmm. because here we, we are talking about fast fashion, um, uh, to bring into attention blouses with black stripes. And the echo of this um, 
black and white combinations, um, woven techniques like um, uh, similar to those uh, created in the area, um, went even farther and uh, we could see them in Vogue China, right? So these uh, black stripes on a, white, um, one, on a white shirt might look universal, but yet they have an origin at some, and we can locate them exactly. Um, seeing these images uh, in, um, in a trend, the um, Romanian fashionistas and uh, anthropologists and many others uh, realized that there is potential in our dowry chest. And they started to look for vintage blouses, for uh, what they uh, inherited from their families or from what they could found in a, any flea market and uh, try to bring them into a different light, uh, taking them out of the context, uh, showing them how universal they actually are and um, how valuable can they be. Trying, of course, to explain this to us that they are making a favor because they are promoting the traditional Romanian blouses. I think it's very important to note at this point that uh, the blouses that we've seen previously and these um, are not traditional ones. They might be in traditionally inspired but uh, they do have lots of issues that, um, that break with tradition uh, and we are not really considering them to be um, helpful to our cause. Um, at least they are made in Romania, let's say that. Well, that's a first plus, but then again, um, I fear that uh, Tom Ford did a better job uh, because he was further away from the truth um, and um, these uh, should have been better documented, in my opinion, and there is enough documentation. We do have enough old public, uh, old uh, pictures that are also publicly available from museums, from communities, and I think um, I, I have more issues with these Romanian made. Romanians have no excuse. Yes. <laughs> we should while, put it bluntly. While cultural appropriation is not fun, I'm more, more, more uh, disturbed by these ones. Yes, because um, um, we tend to be uh, superficial and we don't have this excuse. Yes. Um, so um, we can understand that there was some effort into taking photos and presenting and creating a website to do this. But when we look into details, we realize that um, not the composition or the ornaments or the techniques uh, used for creating this shirt are not what they should be. Although they, um, at a superficial uh, view, right? They might trick even Romanian people which are from different regions. Well, it depends what's your standpoint. If you're looking from very far away, um, it might look okay, but the closer you get, the more issues we ha you, you notice. Let's go closer uh, ourselves. And um, first of all, we should mention that indeed, uh, this style echoed in different other regions of Romania because um, these shepherds are nomadic by occupation. They have to move along with the sheep for greener pastures, right? Yes. And they, during history, they moved along uh, large distances because eventually this is how they, some studies are telling us that people came into Europe, following the herds, looking for, to escape the, um, the, the desert in the, in the south. And um, so these are uh, shepherds from Marginima Sibiului. Uh, here we have a problem because we have five words to describe uh, this occupation in detail. And in English, we have only one, I think. I don't know any other except shepherd. Uh, yeah. When we have uh, pastor, pastures, like uh, from Latin, oier, also from Latin, um, picurar, uh, Romanian, uh, choban, which is from Persian through Turkish uh, influence, and mokan. 
Yes, but the very uh, interesting aspect is that um, the words m have slightly different meanings. You have the oyer, who is the manager, uh, who is the owner of the sheep, and you have the choban, who is the sheep herd. So uh, he's the one who uh, walks the sheep and manages the sheep um, on the pastures. Uh, the, uh, in, in Romanian, we do have this very uh, distinct um, um, difference between the, the boss and the um, worker on the ground. And we, uh, by the clothes, we can define uh, who is who, because these people are shepherds. They are dressed like those people who are tending the sheep, right? Yes, uh, the people tending the sheep uh, would have um, more uh, weather um, proof sheepskins uh, that they would wear on their shoulders to um, help them in the summer, but as well in the winter, uh, from cold, from rain, um, and to give them a sort of a microclimate underneath them. And they discovered, which is normal, that the sheep was already smarter than humans. The sheep adapted with a special uh, uh, coat, right? And people decided, why bother to create something better than nature created? And they just took the skins. It's not a sign of being savage, but it's a sign of being wise and sustainable because you don't waste the resources and energy um, ruining what nature created best through the sheep. So this is why these people are wearing uh, sheepskin coats, not because they're savages or stupid, but because they are um, very sustainable. Uh, it's also interesting to know, yes, it's sheepskins, uh, so it's um, also uh, it's the leather part, but it, it also has the original hair uh, on it, on top of it. Yes. So as they are traveling along with the sheep, they are equally protected as the sheep are. Yes. So, and they travel from Sibiu as far as close to Odessa. They travel far and wide. From the, here to um, here. Uh, a red dot shows um, the area, um, the Marginimia Sibiului area. Um, but it's, if you look at it on a grand scale, um, it's relatively small. It's a um, mountain area, suitable for some mountain uh, sheep, but not all of the 18 villages that comprised the area were able to sustain their living uh, only from the earth. Uh, that they had available there in, in their immediate vicinity. So, of course, they traveled. Uh, the mountain um, sheep people traveled in the mountains. Um, Along uh, Carpathian Range? Around the Carpathian Range, but especially um, to the south, where um, we will talk about it also later, um, the uh, area that it later influenced, but uh, the um, sheep herding people uh, did travel a lot to the east, um, to the um, Dobroja area in Romania, in the vicinity of the um, um, Black Sea, but they also traveled north through current Moldova, through current Ukraine, um, from personal history of my family, uh, the my grandfather and his brothers no my grand grandfather and his brothers um, traveled all the way through to Odessa uh, that was before the first world war yes transhumanza is a uh, uh, UNESCO protected and it has a specific file and the Romanian file added to the initial one that was initiated by Italy and other countries. So uh, transhumanza, human uh, moving along with their herds, uh, is important for so many reasons, for so many reasons also including biodiversity and uh, cultural exchange. But um, let's zoom in into the red uh, dot and see the city of Sibiu uh, cultural uh, European capital of culture in 2005. Seven. 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 Yes. Sorry. And uh, the outskirts of Sibiu, not exactly outskirts, uh, but the edges of Sibiu County. Um, this is um, the map of the current Sibiu County. Um, the um, uh, geopolitical aspects have changed a lot. This is current Romania as it was uh, split into um, counties uh, somewhere after the Second World War, probably. 
Um, uh, but the entire region that we're talking about is currently located in Sibiu County. Uh, and as we can see, it's close uh, to the uh, city of Sibiu. Um, the red area marks the entire Marginimia Sibiului, as stated before. It was a Romanian population at the outskirts of the empire initially, later uh, in the middle of Romania. And the uh, grey um, um, uh, villages next to the red area used to be populated uh, before that, uh, before um, the unification of Romania uh, during the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. These were Saxon uh, um, villages um, lived uh, by um, German-speaking people. Um, of course, in the current um, county of Sibiu, we also have other Romanian communities that, de that developed um, slightly uh, differently to the uh, Marginimia Sibiului, but we can see um, slight um, similarities between them. Um, another region that um, has been rediscovered recently, uh, more recently than Marginimia Sibiului, uh, is the um, um, area around uh, the river uh, Hrtibaciu. Valea Hrtibaciu. Valea Hrtibaciu. Uh, but it's the area that um, surrounds the river Hrtibaciu, Valea Hrtibaciu. And it's here. And it's. Alcina Kirpar Marpo di Limbav. No, no um, exactly. It's, uh, it's, it's a similar Romanian um, area uh, where the Romanian population had their own specific um, um, attire and um, obviously shirts, uh, but it's um, slightly different than the one that we are talking about. Another region would be the Turnava region. Um, in the in north the, of the in, county? In the north of the county with uh, Media Sternava Kopshamika. Uh, it's another Romanian region that also had its own uh, specific um, trends. And so it's important to remember that one administrative county doesn't mean the same clothes and the same uh, occupation and culture for everybody. Within the borders of uh, administrative regions, we can have different styles because here we have the mountains, the sheep and the shepherds, and here we already start to have wineries. And you can see the influence of occupation onto the people's clothes because here you find grapes and vine on the, on the shirts, and here you would find sheepskin vests. Right. And, and lots more floral uh, decoration. Obviously, you also have um, vines and uh, grape, uh, uh, grapes uh, on um, the shirts from uh, Marginima region. It's not that uh, Marginima region only had little sheep on their blouses and the other ones only no. have, uh, had grapes. But yes, uh, it's a definitive uh, way of uh, decorating their clothes. Uh, it's very true that uh, people in the, in the wine growing regions did yeah. have lots of uh, They grapes. have a lot of grapes and their grapes are bigger. <laughs> Obviously, yes. Um, so uh, yes, uh, the region is based on what they did back then, sheep herding, um, and what the area was. It was a mountain area. The other two areas that we uh, discussed right now, Hrtibaciu and Trnava, were uh, area in hillsides. So the main occupation of the it people there uh, wasn't sheep herding, it was uh, more agricultural based. It's true, yes. And um, this is uh, the first um, image that we should um, um, describe a little bit because you, we can see the old style of the, the fabric. The people in the area before the industrialization, they had only the fabric they created um, at home, right? At the beginning of time. And later on, the south of Transylvania had the, uh, this um, um, impact of um, um, small, small scale uh, factories. They're not huge but small, enough to, um, not enough maybe to make export, but to assure the, the needs of the people in the region. Uh, creating fabric and threads later on, Talmachu, 
um, but before that, people were creating um, everything they need pretty much. They created at home, including so the fabric. If we have a short uh, look at this costume, uh, the hat is made out of um, um, sheepskin. Uh, the coat is also sheepskin. Uh, the trousers are woven uh, from wool, white wool. Uh, but the most interesting thing that you are pointing at was the blouse. The blouse um, seems to be an old blouse made on traditional handwoven, so um, handwoven, uh, woven by hand at home by the women of the family. Um, and uh, we uh, noticed that by the stripes in the fabric. It was traditional for old uh, fabrics um, uh, that were woven at home to have stripes. These stripes um, have also um, artistic uh, impact, but it's also a sign of protection uh, that the wife or the mother wanted to... Um, a red thread. A red thread to um, pull a red thread through the fabric to, uh, as a mark of protection. Uh, and it's interesting that this blouse, uh, the, this male blouse, while uh, looking similar to the ones that we uh, have right now in the area, um, shows that it's, wove, it, it's worked with um, probably um, traditional handwoven materials. Uh, this is a picture of an, uh, of an entire family to have a um, good overview how the entire costume used to look at the end of the 18th century. Um, 19th? Uh, sorry, 19th. 19th. Uh, sorry, 19th century. This picture is about 1895. 1895, exactly. Uh, and it shows a family from Poiana Sibiului, one of the villages in the Marginima area. Um, while they might look um, um, similar to the ones that we know right now, they do have lots of differences. Um, we noticed that the blouse of the uh, lady doesn't have lots of black looking um, ornamentation. The ornamentation used to be extremely discreet, extremely fine, extremely tiny extremely tiny stitches uh, and the decoration that we see on the blouse originated in marking the edges of the fabric so you would have two pieces of cloth meeting uh, in the middle of the chest and you had to combine them somehow and they used to do a very fine black um, um, stitch over them that later developed into the wider black stripes that we uh, that we will later see on the traditional uh, blouses other than the black uh, stripes they also used to have a needle embroidery uh, to connect two pieces of fabric and that's uh, also slightly visible on this on the sleeve the very fine line between the two uh, wider black ones is uh, one of those, uh, we call them keitze, little keys. Little, uh, like ancient lace techniques are it's used. A, it's a, made of, based on little knots. It's a, a uh, knot based um, lace that is made uh, with a needle. So it's um, a uh, stitching, uh, stitching needle used to do a very knot, uh, a very fine lacy knotty um, embroidery. <laughs> Um, and I think it's also important to mention that for us, black is not a sad color. Black was very difficult to obtain in the old time because you need a lot of intensity. And uh, because, uh, uh, let's remember, the artificial dyes um, appeared, what, in the second half of the 19th century. Before that, people used to dye all their threads at home and to obtain a profound shade of black it wasn't easy it was it's expensive um, it's, it's luxury to wear perfect black and also black has for us a protective color black is not sad we have the black sea um, black is beautiful indeed um, 
usually um, when trying to dye things black, they if they didn't turn black, they would turn a slight shade of brown or a different shade of darker gray or darker blue. So uh, re true black uh, was indeed a major luxury. Uh, what we notice here in the picture are also the aprons that the lady is wearing. Uh, and very interesting, the uh, front of the apron has frills. Uh, those are also historically a very old tradition to have um, frilly aprons. Uh, the frills on the aprons are um, still current in, in our uh, current um, costume. Fashion, fashion. Yes. Uh, what we also notice is that the um, uh, husband is wearing a traditional vest very similar to the vest uh, that we know nowadays. It's a sheepskin vest. Um, the leather is on the outside, but the inside uh, still had the um, skin, uh, still had used to have the um, fur, uh, so the coat. Um, the man is wearing a blouse, a longer blouse that uh, also has sort of a skirt. This is also something that we see nowadays, but the length of the male uh, skirt um, shrunk during time. And also super interesting um, are the shoes that the man is, we uh, man is wearing. Uh, it's leather shoes, uh, they are called a pinch. Um, and it's traditional shoes that uh, Romanians from all over um, the current Romania were wearing during the time. So it's very traditional shoes. They also had a combination. It's not like um, they were living in uh, no man's land. They also had access to modern shoes like we've seen on the uh, wife and the son. Um, it is, uh, it's important to, to add to this that the it's an old fashioned uh, vest. It's closed onto the chest. It doesn't have the opening on the chest because the interest in wearing such a sheepskin vest is to have your chest protected by cold and by everything. And the opening was in a side and on one of the shoulders. So uh, there are variations of this closed chest. Uh, the male uh, vest, vest from the region still um, is uh, nowadays closed in the front. It's not a um, op op front opening vest. Um, this is very short time after the previous picture, uh, but the changes that we notice in the picture are quite um, intense. Um, we also notice that um, the modern fashion, the city fashion, uh, influenced the um, um, folkwear a lot. Uh, this is a picture, a picture taken about uh, 1909 uh, and it depicts uh, the vil a village uh, teacher and his wife. Um, and the blouse that she is wearing is, the blou is a blouse where we can look at it and see, yes, sure, that's a blouse from the Marginimia Sibiului. We see the um, black stripes um, and we, in, uh, we immediately know, um, yes, that is indeed Marginimia Sibiului. Um, the man is quite conservative, he didn't change, but... It's, it's uh, a very interesting combination between new and old. Um, we notice on his shirt that there are stripes, as we've uh, seen in the, as we discussed previously, um, fabrics with stripes. Uh, usually uh, mean that the um, fabric was woven at home. Um, and uh, he is wearing a blouse made out of old traditional handwoven material, and she is wearing an outfit that um, suggests, uh, suggests uh, modern fashion and modern silhouettes for the time being. Uh, it's a long um, skirt. Uh, longer than uh, previously and longer that we will then we will see later with a very uh, clear and um, marked um, cinched waist uh, and with extremely puffy sleeves and the puffy chest to create that hourglass silhouette. 
So um, from what you are saying, we understand that the lady saw fashion uh, in the city and she said, yeah, okay, I like this. Uh, I like to reshape my silhouette. So I will use uh, uh, our shirts uh, and our techniques and my knowledge and I will recreate uh, this silhouette in my own way, in my own village way, because I don't want to be a total stranger. I want to be fashionable, but I want to show that I also belong to my village. Yes. But I live in my own time. I, I live today. I mean, I'm not stuck in the past. Yes, it's a way to be modern, but still uh, belong to a community. Uh, this picture is about 1920 and it depicts uh, my family, my great-grandparents together with his brothers and his father. Uh, and it's um, the uh, costume that we know nowadays. Uh, very interesting, we talked about the vests, the men wear. Um, uh, these uh, in this, uh, depicted in the picture are modern vests. Um, probably of um, Saxon, Germanic origin, um, obviously split in the middle, easy to wear. Uh, the ladies are also wearing the vest that um, started um, um, during um, that time, 1920. 19, um, uh, we see um, significant cleavage in the ladies' vests. Um, that um, was there to uh, also make the embroidery on the um, front of the shirt visible. So uh, from what you say and from what I see here on my own sheepskin vest, uh, is this one older because it's not so open? Um, that's hard to say um, um, because uh, it depends from region, uh, from a region to another region. Uh, your vest is not um, from the Marginimia Sibiului, it's from another uh, area. Uh, and the way that they cut the vests uh, could have differed a lot. So, um, But based on the um, uh, embroidery on your vest, I would say it's about the same age. Uh, but not the same area, not the same village. So this is how we can read into the signs and into the old photos, because we can identify uh, the, um, uh, the fashion, therefore the time, therefore what was happening in the society, how people would uh, make some of the objects at home, items, some of them would be bought from uh, Sibiu. They, they could be traveling more often to the city maybe, uh, it's very interesting, uh, this entire family uh, was living at that time in Dobrogea, so next to the Black Sea. They were living far, far away from their uh, local um, home village. Um, this picture is taken in Marginimia Sibiului, um, but they kept their own uh, folkware. So um, yes, they traveled a lot, uh, they went everywhere, but they had a very clear sense of belonging to the uh, area that they originally came from. Sure, they did different modern things like the modern vest. Yes, that was a trend, but that the trend was specific to the uh, Marginima area. That wasn't a, a trend that they took from Dobroja, from the region where they moved. It was a trend from their home area. So they kept connected no matter they, how far? They kept, they kept connected no matter how far they went. They kept connecting, connected to their specific village. Um, here I would like to ask you something because it's um, a very old tradition of uh, some holidays called Nedea, where people would gather once a year um, to meet and greet and exchange and find new uh, friends or wives. to check on wives. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be more... Uh, um, well, uh, the two of the three ladies are from the village, so um, um, most of them did marry locally. Yes, um, and this happened not only in... Um, I understand this happened in Marginia Sibiuli, but this happened in other parts of Romania as well, with um, people from Bran traveling to Vranche and then returning to the origin once a year. Um, well, you are based in Mini. 
Spanish now? Do you return once a year for a family meeting? We do have a family meeting in my family, but it's, um, well, it's the same like back then. Uh, back then, they used to meet at home during the winter time because the, uh, this was the time when uh, they um, had less, they had fewer jobs managing the sheep. They didn't have to milk the sheep. They didn't have to uh, um, manage the um, uh, lambs. They didn't have to uh, prepare the cheese. So um, based on uh, the year round uh, management of the sheep, they would meet in the villages, usually in winter. Me and my family, we meet in the summer because um, it all depends on the children's vacations. So it's all related to the preoccupation that the family had. Um, this is, um, these are two pictures from uh, around 1930. And it's very interesting to see that the traditional styles uh, lived side by side. Uh, the, elderly, uh, the older lady is wearing um, a costume that was fashionable when she was younger, like in all communities, I guess, uh, with uh, no, uh, little or no embroidery on the chest and probably very thin uh, embroidery on the sleeves. Um, and the younger lady on the right is wearing um, a modern costume uh, for back then uh, with uh, thicker black sleeves, uh, uh, sorry, thicker black stripes with gold work embroidery um, in the black stripes. And very interesting, um, we see the frills on the blouse. Uh, these frills were it only appeared uh, uh, around 1900. Um, and uh, very interesting, uh, the frills are decorated uh, with uh, lace, uh, lace techniques that were um, Western, uh, um, so inspired from uh, Western fashion. Um, these are uh, pictures that were um, um, used by museums to promote um, traditional folk um, uh, attire. And I think they're very interesting and important to us uh, uh, because we can see how the costumes used to be worn, how the um, um, sleeve looked like um, while dressed, um, how the head um, is uh, decorated, uh, what's the um, look uh, of the vest with the embroidery on the front of the um, um, shirt. Um, we have obviously the black stripes, but next to the black stripes, you also have very fine embroidery. And it's important to see how this, look, uh, this looks like uh, in an entire context. Uh, also from museums, we have partnership with uh, Astra Museum in Sibiu, and they would usually help a lot trying to bring the best they can and put it into exhibitions for us to understand. And they recently have one, it's going to Madrid uh, to delight other people as well. Uh, but uh, uh, it would be impossible to um, to understand the photo, the photos are black and white, and we tend to imagine that it's only black and white on the costume because of the contrast. But when we look into details, we notice that it's not just black and white. Um, obviously, big um, parts of the embroidery were done in black thread because black was obviously, as, as we've stated, a sign of luxury. Um, but very specific for this region is that the embroidery used to be extremely small and they did like to have lots of tiny little details that were also made in color. Uh, with color, uh, we have everything from yellow to reds to blues uh, and greens. Um, the uh, um, shirt in the middle of the picture is probably going to travel to Madrid it was part of the ex exhibition from last year. Uh, and it's an extremely inter interesting example. From far away, it looks really simple. 
um, it's the middle of the, it's the meeting point between the very old shirts and the newer shirts that we know today. Uh, it does have um, a black stripe on the front, but it's shorter. Uh, it does have black stripes on the sleeves that we cannot see in the picture, but it does have them. Uh, but the embroidery um, on the blouse is extremely small, uh, neatly done, and uh, it has uh, little drops of color. Uh, do you think it's important to communicate that you have a lot of fabric? Because as you can see in the, in the, in the photos, yes, maybe you need a lot of fabric to enhance uh, fine waist, like uh, our glass figure, right? But why is it important to have so much fabric compared with all the other blouses in the neighborhood? Um, why is so much fabric in Sibiu? Um, um, well, it's a combination. Um, when they evolved from hand-woven uh, fabric to uh, industrially made fabric, uh, the cut of the shirts also changed uh, and they used to use lots of fabric. Um, specifically, um, the front of the shirt might be 1.5 meters wide and that would be gathered uh, around uh, the neck. Uh, and it would lay mostly flat, but it would create a very nice silhouette. Uh, but the point of the entire fabric was um, to create a very uh, nice um, um, layer around the body. Um, and these uh, tucks would uh, I create a, thermal, a, proof. a thermal, uh, thermal proof between the body and the exterior. So sure, they used more fabric, um, thinner fabric to create uh, a nice layer of isolation. Another aspect is obviously a um, sign of wealth. If you uh, were able to afford to buy that much fabric to buy a shirt, to, to create a shirt, it was a sign of um, well, well, status yes. uh, and status. Exactly. OK, so we don't have to. Uh, to be cheap when buying fabric, we need a lot of fabric and we know that good quality fabric is very expensive. It's more expensive than the, the thread needed for the embroidery. Yes, uh, and it's a mind shift from the current um, way of viewing things. Um, now we uh, see, uh, now we uh, look into fitted garments. Fitted garments are blinding us, basically. Um, but the interesting thing with the old uh, things were um, they used to be um, kind of one size fits many, uh, not all, but many. Uh, and um, they, uh, they had their own kind of comfort because they were, um, you had enough fabric to cover you, to, to make you look decent, to... Um, um, to protect you to against the sun, against cold. To in protect Sibiu it's much exactly. colder than in Bucharest. Well, you have a mixture. Uh, yes, it's much colder. It's uh, a mountain region uh, where you would have uh, harsh winters with lots of snow. But also the summers um, could get quite sunny and uh, a blouse needed to protect you from the sun as well. Sunburns, yes. Um, um, the shirt on the right is a shirt uh, from the middle of uh, the 20th century uh, and it's the um, shirt that we consider currently the current uh, shirt from the Marginima. What's very interesting about it is uh, we, see, we see that um, the lace has been added to the entire costume we have lace uh, on the frills of the sleeve. The sleeve has uh, um, evo evolved into frilled sleeves. Uh, back uh, way back when, we didn't have uh, frills. We could have had um, um, turned turned sleeves that would create uh, um, a voluminous uh, cloud at the bottom of the sleeve. 
Uh, then we evolved into small uh, frills and the frills uh, evolved into Bigger. 10 centimeter long frills that were later uh, decorated with um, lace, usually crocheted lace, uh, but uh, any uh, lace uh, that would that was housemade or could be so used. it looks like women wanted wanted to experiment because if for this kind of shirt that looks uh, simple but fat uh, you go into details and you notice a combination of many needlework techniques many embroidery techniques and other needlework then you would uh, have mixture of little spots of color here and here you'd um, you'd see they gave up on some needle uh, techniques, techniques to start uh, playing with the uh, crochet, right? Yes, uh, the latest uh, shirt also has uh, replaced the colorful embroidery with uh, embroidery done in golden thread. Uh, it's metallic thread that they used uh, for decorations um, most visibly nowadays on the front of the shirt, but also as small uh, details uh, as part of the sleeve decoration. So I guess also uh, embroidery techniques were fashionable or not, or they were also changing, it's not the costume. Everything was, ex every generation had uh, its, um, its um, favorite um, techniques. Yeah. And um, they wanted to experiment, they didn't want to get bored, they wanted to distance from their mothers, obviously, like, like every generation. Any generation <laughs> would do. Yes. But from what you're telling me, I understand that somehow at this point, many people decided that's what we like, this is us. And from there on, you don't see so much change into the next generation. No, this is the kind of shirt that um, stood the test of time, basically. Uh, so, uh, in this moment, if you think about other goods like uh, wine or uh, sausages or uh, um, uh, jam, they can be located and protected to a certain region, defined by certain ingredients and methods of production, meeting if you meet some criteria, you can be champagne. Otherwise, you are just sparkling wine, right? Yes. Is this the champagne <laughs> for the <laughs> Sibiu? This is the champagne for the Sibiu blouse, yes. And all the rest of the blouses with white uh, fabric and black stripes are sparkling. All the rest are sparkling wines. So it's, it's a very nice comparison. Um, I'm thinking about it for a long time because in this uh, project that we are involved, Tracks for Crafts, uh, many bring this concern of uh, how can they protect collective uh, intellectual property? Because it's property of a community. Of course, it goes to a certain person and person who is responsible or who is the guardian of this knowledge for the entire community. Um, but. like in this case, we will return to the other photos. But uh, we have a guardian, or you, we have more guardians. Um, do you think these shirts have a chance to be at least to serve as an example or a prototype of how can some institutions start a file and say, okay, this shirt is pro uh, protected by origin, by certain characteristic. Um, from what we could see compared with other blouses from Eastern Europe in general and f compared with other blouses in Romania, the blouses around Sibiu are much better documented because uh, people had the chance to preserve them also in photos, to preserve them in their dowry chests. I mean, the, the area was not um, heavily destroyed in, a, in the war or with earthquakes with, with others. Um, so can they be the prototype, the, um, the flagship showing the direction? How can you protect not only sausages and wine, but also uh, fashion? Because this is fashion, it's an expression of... Yes, I think... Um it's indeed uh, very possible to um, identify them and to, to define them to a very clear area. 
um, the fear that I have is that um, the shirts kept evolving and it's an entire dis discussion surrounding where do you begin and where do you stop? Do you begin with, uh, I don't know, the um, 18th century? We do not have that many examples from way back when. Um, and how do you um, protect it at the same time? How do you keep um, without really gatekeeping it, but how do you um, keep the uh, integrity, the moral integrity of the costume? Uh, because everybody will say, well, I have a costume from Sibiu. Um, how do you, how can you tell them, well, no. It's that's, not Marginimia Sibiu. That's Sibiole. not Marginimia Sibiu, or that's not the times that we are discussing uh, in this topic, because um, there have been shirts um, that were embroidered during the last 30, 40 years in the Marginimia Sibiului that might not have been the um, wisest uh, choice, uh, choices for fabric, for decoration, for... So, um, yes, it, it, it's, it is in, indeed possible to define these shirts um, as uh, a registered um, and recognized element, but it's a complex discussion. Yes, but uh, it's important to think about it because if this would be possible, I think um, um, the idea and the request should start from the community. You mm -hmm. are part of that community. Uh, it will not, uh, you cannot wait for an institution to say, um, I decided to protect your shirts. Um, the okay. choice and the, um, the request should come from the, from the communities, going to Astra Museum, for instance, because Astra is our friend always, and say, what can, can this be done? What can we do for this to be done? And um, I think it's, an important, uh, to, it's important to remember and to try to gather as much experience from tracks for craft, if possible, to understand if... Um, uh, is more than utopia to, to imagine that this shirt can be protected. Uh, it's a lot of fabric. As we've seen uh, before, yes, this uh, blouse has uh, an entirety of 1.6 meters at the front and about one meter at the back of the uh, shirt. Uh, the sleeves are about 1.1 meter wide. Um, what's interesting to uh, this is the um, way that the embroidery is placed on the entire uh, shirt. So, for example, the black stripes do start at the very top of the blouse. Uh, they sometimes do have decorations on the side of the black stripes. Um, these decorations begin at a certain point and they end at a certain point. Uh, you have a decoration that marks the shoulder, uh, similar to the place that uh, used to delimit, to um, mark the altiza, so the shoulder um, uh, element that is uh, known from other Romanian um, shirts. We can see it here much better. Exactly. Uh, this is a prime example of um, not, uh, uh, not all blouses in the area were black. Uh, this is a um, uh, wedding uh, blouse from the Rashinar village about um, uh, end of the 19th century, embroidered in silk thread and not um, cotton, like most of the current blouses are done. Uh, we also notice the um, 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 sleeves that are um, flipped extra around. Extra long and... Extra long and, and flipped around. Um, this was a design choice that they had back then to make them, um, yeah, to um, mark the volume and to show how much fabric they had available, uh, available basically. But this uh, shirt is very interesting because this shirt, like many Romanian shirts from other regions, does have a dedicated piece of uh, fabric that was just on the shoulder. Uh, it, was, um, it wasn't 
uh, as wide, the fabric on the shoulder wasn't as wide as the rest of the fabric for the sleeve. It was a very uh, traditional Romanian uh, design element. Yes, and uh, f there are so many reasons, not only practical and uh, um, um, e practical element, there are so many reasons why this kind of shirt with a specific piece for the shoulder are inscribed in UNESCO intangible heritage because this, although it's a, the smaller piece of fabric, it's um, dense in uh, meanings and um, artistry and embroidery techniques and um, legends as well. And we should discuss it in separate uh, uh, talks. Um, but um, this, is, this is a very old fashion, let's say, indeed very old. And it, uh, there are similar shells on uh, um, another regions of Sibiu County who look m a little bit more similar, showing us that perhaps somewhere back in time there was more unity and farther um, this variety of uh, splitting into Ternave, Hertibaci, Marginime, and so on. Um, this is the, the explosion of color and, uh, and uh, art and craftsmanship that you, you wanted to, to show. Exactly. Uh, when we look from really afar at the um, uh, costumes worn in Marginimia Sibiului, most of us would tend to think they're all black and white. Uh, and the prime example from uh, for not everything is black and white is obviously the vest. Uh, in this example, we have a female vest um, worn in the area. Uh, this vest um, was uh, starting to, to get into um, wear uh, at the beginning of the 20th century. And it's extremely interesting because um, of the color choices. So first of all, it's sheepskin um, with uh, um, sheep hair on the interior of the vest. Uh, but it does have um, important red uh, markings on it. And the thread that is used to embroider it is very colorful. We, had, we have at least two shades of red. We have purple. We have um, shades, shades of blue, shades of green, and lots and lots uh, of metallic thread. Um, it's similar to the entire costume from Marginima. When you look from, a, from afar, it's quite black and white. But uh, when you get closer, you notice all the details and all the uh, very fine um, embroidery uh, elements that are into it. Uh, what's interesting to note is that the shirts were usually uh, stitched and embroidered by women from the community. So a mother would embroider her family's uh, blouses, but the vests were made specifically uh, by a different trade. Um. Um, this is a picture from my family. The young boy on the left is my father. Um, and um, it's, I think it's a very interesting picture. It's a picture taken uh, for a wedding. Uh, it's the youngest daughter of the family in the middle of the picture. Uh, and it was very interesting for me to see the evolution and the coexistence of various costumes at the same time. So uh, we have the mother of the bride you wearing a very traditional um, and simple blouse, which was a bit more simple than the ones she used to wear as a younger uh, woman. And what's very interesting in the picture is that the women in this picture uh, are wearing blouses. Uh, they are either wearing their own wedding blouses or they are wearing blouses that were modern at the, uh, when they got married. So it's very interesting from nowadays perspective to think that all your sisters are wearing their wedding dress at your own wedding. Uh, but it was uh, something that they did back then. Uh, and the evolution of the blouse is visible in one picture. 
from embroidery without a uh, golden thread on the front of the chest to four stripes with specific embroidery to the central uh, blouse with five stripes and a diamond shaped uh, um, gold work embroidery. Um, it's very interesting to see basically about three generations of women in, in, a, in the same picture wearing their wedding, wedding attire <laughs> uh, and for us to be able to see the evolution of the blouses. Yes, it's important to remember, to remind everybody that uh, before uh, this fashion of white wedding dresses started by Queen uh, Victoria, um, we had um, different, a different idea of what a wedding dress should be like and women from the Romanian uh, ladies from the south would rather use uh, shades of red for their bridal uh, shirts. Um, but here in Sibiu, um, we can see that, yes, some of them were using uh, fuchsia um, or other shades of red because there is a combination. Uh, but also black could be a color for your wedding dress. Um, what's special about the um, dresses in the Marginima area is that while they didn't wear an uh, entire different dress or entire different costume, uh, the skirts um, used to have a white apron for the wedding day. So uh, the Victorian influence was, is also visible in this picture based on the white uh, apron, uh, but uh, they kept their uh, black-based uh, costumes. Well, we've seen previously, the vest does have uh, lots of um, Accent. red accents. Um, so um, this is regarding the evolution of city trends compared to the, uh, and their impact on the um, local folk costume. Uh, while at the beginning of the 20th century, um, our glass silhouette was desirable, uh, as uh, seen in the picture on the um, uh, left. Uh, the right picture uh, likes to represent a pencil skirt in the traditional way. So um, the a shorter skirt with very, uh, with very tight pleats tries to do a pencil skirt but in a um, traditional interpretation. So yes, I'm aware. I live in the same world, but I like my own clothes. <laughs> and I will adjust. It looks like the skirt is the one changing the most. Uh, yes, the, it is most visible for the eye. The length of the skirt was um, pretty easy to change uh, because it was a white fabric with not that much embroidery. They did have uh, various kinds of uh, um, decoration on the skirts, but not that many. Uh, also, the blouse is quite uh, has changed during the years uh, from the one where you could still see the white fabric on the front of the shirt to um, the trend that um, arrived during the 60s, uh, like the um, bride in the previous picture. Uh, where most of the front of the shirt is covered in embroidery. It's important to see, it looks like a battle between black and white. And it looks like black is conquering. But let's see, uh, what is important is that nowadays if you go to a store and buy black thread, it's the same price like for yellow thread or blue thread or anything. So it doesn't matter how much you want to buy, you buy. So the black can advance with no impact on your budget. Or in the old days, it was very different. The price of the materials used could make a difference into this. Do you think it, it's also part of this, or is just the aesthetic requiring uh, a different balance between black and white? Um, I think most of it is triggered by aesthetics and less, less, than, less uh, from prices. I think, well, I... Don't, I haven't researched this, but I think uh, black thread at the beginning of the 20th century was 
comparably uh, co uh, comparably pricey as the other colors. Um, and I think it, uh, it was just design choice to have wider um, embroideries. But the, the black uh, shade in the past was better. You told me that the, bla <laughs> the black of today is not as good. Um, Who told you that? You, it's not only your opinion. I mean, of course, the black in the past, there is nothing like the good well, old black. Uh, good old black is also um, determined by the quality of the fiber that was used. And cotton fabric um, up to the middle of the um, uh, 20th century was uh, more of a luxury good and it uh, was um, made in a different way. So the, um, the thread had a different shine to it compared to the ones we have now. The fibers in the cotton thread were longer so that um, has an impact because newer cotton threads use shorter um, filaments uh, and it gets fluffier much easier and fluffier uh, thread does not, doesn't shine like... Uh, so we need to look for long staple, uh, long staple Egyptian cotton if we yes. want to find the best possible. Okay. But very interesting, um, they started using uh, color fast um, so, um, threads that wouldn't run. So uh, this shirt made probably um, during the world wars is still black nowadays. It hasn't fainted, uh, fainted uh, the colors hasn't fainted, although the shirt could have been worn and it was displayed um, in the sun, in the light. It was displayed in the light. It wasn't displayed in the direct, in under direct sunlight, but it was uh, displayed in a cupboard um, where sun could get into it. It wasn't uh, stored uh, in a dark, permanently in the in the dark. Uh. I think it's a problem that the producers of threads that are operating today, not all of them, but many of them, are producing these threads for people to use them as a hobby and to spend their time in a beautiful way, pass the time making a few stitches. And they are not putting equally effort into creating long lasting quality uh, fibers because they imagine that not so many people are using them for embroidery, but we do. And this is why we care for our black to be black and for our uh, threads to be shiny shiny and long lasting because we really wear them we we wash them and we wear them people we, we don't uh, do them once and then put them on the wall in a in a frame we don't frame our embroidery we wear our embroidery but i think this is uh, one of the problems this is uh, maria chuka is a human living treasure uh, this title was um, offered within a nice ceremony in Astra. We've been there to congratulate her, her daughter and her niece, because she's passing uh, the um, family uh, fame. And uh, um, you can um, meet her if you are lucky in some of the fairs. She's participating and she's... Uh, always working in the open so you can ask her questions. But if you are a total beginner, you better don't disturb her because she's really working. You can go and ask her if you already uh, did your homeworks. I think she will be answering you then. And she will say, yeah, you are doing well. <laughs> and she's using crochet for the lace decorating the edges of the shirt. And this is the way she's uh, keeping her uh, patterns because I think that's the best way she can show it to the customers. As uh, an embroiderer myself, also for you, for me, I can understand the pattern if I see it on a paper. Sometimes I don't care even to color it, uh, but um, it's not always easy for customers to choose or for beginners to choose 
a pattern unless they see it really on the uh, fabric. Also, so it makes a huge difference if you look at uh, some crosses on a piece of paper or if you see it in real embroidery. This is 3D real, this is the real thing. And this is why we consider it's important to make our, um, to bring our contribution to, for the future. And within this project, Tracks for Crafts, we want to gather samples. People would say so many times, ah, do you use uh, the latest technology? Yes, we will use the latest technology possible, of course. But if you don't have the real thing on uh, paper, you, you miss so many details that the photographs and digital archives um, cannot um, uh, pass it. Yes. So this is maybe a personal question. Uh, what would be the first thing to disappear from here? What can you give up? This is so. Um, first of all, the picture shows traditional uh, Romanian food. So we uh, we have cheese, uh, we have red onions, very important for the uh, as a vegetable. Our, our favorite ve vegetable. Our favorite vegetable. <laughs> Garlic and onion. Okay. Um, then we have polenta, momoliga, uh, and we have um, barbecued meat or usually uh, any kind of uh, processed meat. Um, well, uh, I must admit I'm not a fan of onions, so uh, the cheese is most important to me. The cheese. The cheese, uh, yes. Uh, and then um, the polenta is also very important to me, the way my father makes it. Yes, so it's important to remember that uh, m most of our cheese is white, it's not yellowed. Uh, yes, um, that's because um, it's, um, it depends on the recipe uh, and the white cheese is usually uh, cheese that uh, is conserved in uh, salt water. The yellow cheese is usually cheese that is dried up. Yes. So, uh, but the traditional Romanian cheese uh, is, the, uh, is one that is preserved in um, salted water and it's related to the Greek feta cheese. It's not the same. It's, it's not the same. Oh, no, oh. No, 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 but um, it's related. So it's, uh, it's related. It's a close um, cousin. It's important to mention that the um, uh, cheese is one of the um, export products of uh, Marginima Sibiuli to the rest of us, of the other side of the mountains. We go to the market and uh, we buy cheese from Sibiu because we, we have a choice. We can buy from other places, but the cheese from Sibiu is to be the... Um, and we doubt that all the cheese sold as cheese from Sibiu is exactly like with the shirts. This is an export product, the same as the shirt. Are they really from Sibiu? Um, well, the cheese, um, and it's similar to the um, um, costumes, uh, people from the Sibiu region traveled far and wide uh, and the cheese isn't, it's not uh, made in Sibiu, but it's made after uh, the um, um, traditional recipes that uh, they had from home. So it's uh, normal that Sibiu cheese is made in other cities, but uh, it's all a thing of, uh, of the recipe used and the processes used. So if people, people would um, understand it maybe easier and that's why we keep comparing the shirts with other products mm -hmm. uh, because the uh, EU already has regulations about food. Let's see about other cultural products because food is culture as well. Of yes. course it is, yes. Yes. So let's see about the shirts, how far uh, the shirts are going and how far we can say they are Sibiu shirts. In Sibiu County, if we go up north in um, Ternave, we can see black, a lot of black, but uh, in a different proportions with a lot of um, other accessories like the head, um, head cover and this, uh, I don't even have a name for it in English. This collar, um, lace, lace collar. Um, so, for instance, for me, because I'm interested in traditional shirts, I know they are not from Marginim and Sibiu, uh, but they are from Sibiu County. So we have to be very specific how we call them, what is the correct name and correct definition. 
because they are shirts from Sibiu, yet not from Marginimia Sibiului. Um, yes, the Marginimia Sibiului refers to a ethnographic region. Um, the uh, Sibiu County that we know nowadays is a political administrative area that was defined somewhere uh, between the World Wars or after the Second World War. Um, and influences from the Marginimia area spread to uh, most of the um, uh, neighboring regions. It spread uh, over the mountains to the south, um, but it also spread all around um, to the neighboring areas, possibly because of the importance of the Romanian school from Sibiu. Uh, the Astra Association was founded in Sibiu and it was uh, um, community of intellectual of Romanian intellectuals that were uh, promoting the Romanian culture in the area. That was uh, still while um, Sibiu was part of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. So it might be their influence the, um, um, on the region that Marginimia Sibiului, so the uh, Romanian, uh, the Romanian uh, community that was closest uh, to the city, that uh, that was the reason why it why it influenced all the neighboring areas. But I think it needs to be viewed as an influence, and I think um, we need to do some more research regarding what were the traditional. Um, costumes worn in the neighboring area areas before that because it's the same um, that we've experienced with the Hurtibachu area. Hurtibachu area is nowadays an uh, area that looks similar to the Marginimia Sibiului. They uh, have most uh, black embroidery uh, and the um, kinds, uh, the way the embroidery is spread on the shirt is similar to the Marginimia area but uh, thanks to a recent uh, research project that uh, we did ne uh, in uh, combination with um, museums and um, ambulanța, ambulanța pentru monumente, monumente. Um, we rediscovered an entire costume that came before uh, the oh. modern one that was absolutely spectacular and Sure, it's a related, yeah. but uh, completely different. And I think it's important to revitalize or to rediscover the local traditions. So I would say the current blouses are inspired, are inspired mar by the Marginima Sibiului area. But it's important to also uh, research and see what came before them. The problem is, uh, with this project, the problem is that we knew what are the true shells from Hrtibaj Valley. But we went there trying to convince the people to give them another chance and recover them because they, they are in denial and they refuse to accept. They had different shirts from those that they prefer today, those with black stripes. I think the one that, uh, that um, are created in Marginima Sibiului offer a better reputation and a bigger umbrella of being Romanian in Sibiu. So I think it's more obvious if you are wearing this kind of blouse that you are from a Romanian community in Sibiu, rather than wearing your very tight on your little valley of just few, six, seven villages, you feel stronger and you feel uh, more connected with the rest. And I think this is the reason why they embraced, I, the study is not for me to say why they are in denial, but they are, <laughs> this I, I can say. And, uh, uh, it's a hard uh, work and um, promoting and communicating is so many times is the key for... I think it's similar to the Bavarian Dirndl. The Bavarian Dirndl is not... Um, it's similar to the national uh, folk wear. There is no national folk wear. Uh, there is specific folk wear to a specific village, to a specific area. And I think we need to focus more on that and to uh, raise awareness uh, in that, on that particular aspect, folkwear refers to a, to a very specific region and to a very specific um, time frame. And it's the same with Hrtibachu. Sure, there were just uh, seven or eight villages, whatever, 
uh, it's important to raise awareness and to accept that that was the specific for uh, them and it's uh, those are so much more valuable than the national costume with prestige i mean you can still the, the, you can still regain your prestige or bring it you can still bring back prestige with your own uh, specific um, costume otherwise if you imitate somebody you would fall into their shadow and you never get out of that Yes, indeed. And it's, it's not specific, so um, it's Hurti, a pity, yeah. Hurti, Hurti Bacio area used to have different kinds of embroidery, uh, spectacular kinds of embroidery, and you need to embrace that uniqueness and um, individuality. And you are an example of uh, our ef how our effort has an echo, because you are from Marginima Sibiru and you are working on a shirt like this, but yet in the same time you are dreaming and planning for a Hrtibaj shirt, because you want to make this clear and you want to um, fight for the heritage of all your county and all your country, after all, and uh, our uh, whole continent, in, uh, if you have time. Um, for me, it was very um, eye-opening to see the old Hurtibachu um, blouses. I, I, I must admit, I have never seen them before, and it, uh, they're impressive and spectacular. And they have an Altitza, which is amazing, because we were fighting so many years to have the Altitza recognized, so now we have the Altitza great. Um, I must admit, I joined the community, but I didn't quite identify myself with the Altitza. That was something that I didn't have from my village. Um, I did embroider uh, blouses with Altitza because um, it's, it was a thing that we did, but my uh, interest lay uh, indeed more in my area and more in the um, areas in my vicinity. So yes, um, currently um, Marginima next is the neighboring area. Um, what is important, I think, for everybody to, to remember is that uh, in our community we can offer assistance. Um, we cannot solve all Romania and all the villages, but uh, if you dream about making a shirt, it's important to uh, try to study a little bit the geography, the history of the place, and to try to be more specific, because if you are asking, I want to have a blue shirt, um, it would be very difficult for us to guide, to offer guidance. But if you are specific with your questions, we would be able to answer you properly. And I hope you understand, and after the next um, discussions, you understand how much importance we have to pay to all these details, because this is, uh, they are the signs that speak. They are the soon signs. Um, and in order to read them, yes. Um, you have to learn geography, history, economics, uh, and not only. If you browse on the internet, internet is not always, you'll find everything on the internet. It's a great source, but you have to identify trustworthy sources. If you go on Pinterest and you um, give it a shout, like Ia de Sibiu, Fortunately, I was surprised to see that some of the patterns I designed and I uh, archived on the blog appeared among the top search. Or maybe Pinterest gave it to me <laughs> to keep me happy. But farther, you could see so many wrong things, wrong labeled as Sibiu. Uh, you could find Ia de Sibiu uh, on a platform similar with Amazon. And you can buy costume of Sibiu along with detergent, potatoes, chips, cigarettes. I don't know how many other things, everything, electronics. And you can just add it in the basket. Or a proper traditional costume is not something like a carnival costume that you can add, a Spider-Man costume. Ah, let's have a Sibiu costume as well. <laughs> ah, let's think about the Halloween costume as well. Because this shows your um, um, interest into it. Are you pretending to be from Sibiu, or you are from Sibiu, or you want to dedicate it from uh, time to understand it and to, to make it properly? We all also find so many shirts that look like Sibiu, but they are not um, um, linked to their origin. 
They're uploaded with no information. And we know they might be from Sibiu County. But uh, for foreign eyes, they're just a shirt. And all, especially if they appear among Ukrainian shirts. Yeah, of course. Who, whose fault is this? I don't know. But we also have uh, examples of photos that are not linked to the source, but they are rightly labeled as saliste. Um, in, indeed, um, the pictures shown previously were questionable pictures of questionable blouses where I find myself asking myself, what's that? Is That's not uh, the way the blouses should look like. But this is a prime example of a beautifully made picture where the headdress and the hairstyle are fitting to the area where uh, we can see an older sty uh, style of vest where the vest is closed um, um, up to the top of the vest uh, and it's uh, the blouse is probably uh, 1920s or 1930s um, in, indeed it's a impressive example of a costume that's uh, well thought of and uh, well put together. So it's very important to remember that we also have a responsibility that everything that we upload on the internet is there for the future for people to make mistakes if we mislead them or for people to learn and progress if we put them right and if we label them right. So if uh, Trucks for Trucks uh, Trucks for Crafts is wondering, it's an impossible name for us to pronounce, Trucks for Crafts. Um, if it's wondering how we can use the latest technology, first of all, let's do it, let's do it labeling right, because if we add the uh, right tags, uh, the, um, all these intelligent engines will be able to, to take them as correct, because Mm, artificial intelligence is something that for the moment we feed with information. So if we put the information correct, we have more chances to find it further into the future. So after two years from now, when I will shout, uh, hey Siri, show me EFC view, I hope to have the uh, correct answers. Uh, thank you, Ioana. Please uh, tell us your conclusion for this talk. Um. I think the most important thing is to keep in mind that um, there is uh, lots of diversity. Um, there is no one single uh, answer, un uh, qu uh, one single answer will answer all the questions. Uh, and it's important to focus on the individuality uh, of the specific micro areas and time regions in order to uh, benefit from the entirety of the abundance that we had and to not try to squeeze it all under um, traditional national costume it's n it's never national costume it's also it's it's always related to a very to specific simplify. area to very specific people and it's important to uh, uh, preserve that individuality. Thank and you thanks very for much. having me. Thank you.